we were talking earlier about there's been a, a marked change in um, in social media and, and sort of broadly in po- popular culture. But I also did cite that one of the changes that we've seen is that you have newscasters who are unafraid to uh, speak about Palestinian rights. And I will tell you this, that like 10, 15 years ago, when I actually did genuinely have an interest in, in, in being on MSNBC, when I was like, this could be a career for me. I mean, I, 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 you know, I didn't, I didn't want to necessarily do prime time, but, uh, or, or I would have rather done late night, but I was like, I'm the only person who would go on there and criticize Israel. In fact, back in the early aughts, when I would do MSNBC, when it was Buchanan and Scarborough at night, Buchanan would have me on when he was filling in because he knew that I was like, and it was gross. I felt gross about it because he'd have me on and he would just bring me on because he knew I was a, um, a lefty Jew who would criticize Israel. Right. And, and, so and, you can outsource the, yeah, the need yeah, for yeah. critique. To, and, to and he did it just because I think he's an anti-Semite. I mean, I, I, I came to understand that and then I sort of stopped doing it, but uh, with him anyways. But this is really, I think, a big deal because Ali Velshi is um, he's all over the MSNBC uh, schedule. Mm-hmm. Like whenever anybody's out, he fills in for them. And he does like, I don't know, like three hours a day on that network. He does good work. And he does good work. I mean, he's Canadian. So I think that's part of it. And I don't want to make Mehdi maple. also does good work on the network, and he's uh, Mehdi is just joined British. on Sunday. On on uh, on Sunday, he's on MSNBC. He does the Peacock thing, but that's like you know, the, the I don't know how many people watch the Peacock to be honest with you. But um, on MSNBC, it makes news that that he says this. Yeah. Here's Ali Velshi saying something that I think is really both important and to a large extent unprecedented that you have a regular host talking this way about the situation uh, in Israel. Palestinians are at best third-class citizens in the nation of their birth. The idea that it's even remotely controversial to call what Israel has imposed on Palestinians a form of apartheid is laughable. One look at a current map of Israel, Gaza, and the occupied territories conjures up only one other example, apartheid-era South Africa. The Israeli government, on an ongoing basis, declares parcels of land on which Palestinians live to be either of military or archaeological importance, causing residents to be evicted. Sometimes there's a court case, and almost always the Palestinians lose. Yet months or weeks later, that same important land suddenly becomes home to a brand new Israeli settlement. As more and more Jewish settlers take over land on which Arabs live, the occupied West Bank becomes de facto more Israeli and in the explicit hopes of the Israeli government, more Jewish. This is a long-standing attempt and a deliberate attempt to force Arabs who have lived in that land sometimes for hundreds of years out. It's an attempt to dilute their presence because to have Arabs as full participants is in the opinion of the Israeli government and their courts diluting Israel. Just prior I mean, can you argue with that? Is there anything that anybody reasonably can argue with on that? Nothing. Yeah, and and what's really disturbing about the conversation surrounding this is I, I mentioned I was having some debates over the weekend with, with friends about this topic um, who would consider themselves on the left, but, you know, it's just Hamas is a terrorist organization. Hamas wants the extermination of Jewish people. What Alice said right there just because it's sanitized and in the form of state violence doesn't mean that israel isn't trying to do the reverse or do you know essentially ethnically cleanse the palestinians arab brown people except they have a lot more power and they have a lot more resources and they actually have the means to do it unlike you know the extreme characterization of what um palestinians are trying to do and you keep mentioning the shift in the discourse surrounding this topic, and I know it's noticeable. And I think last week I was just so, you know, inundated with hopelessness about the situation that it was like, well, that's worthless, but it's not worthless. That's important, what Ali's saying there. Uh, John Oliver did a segment, apparently, uh, calling it an apartheid state over the weekend. And the fact that these mainstream um, commentators and people who have influence are are 
centering their focus on this and and framing it from this way that's new i mean like it was either not discussed or you had bill maher on essentially excusing the apartheid excusing the ethnic cleansing excusing the violence against palestinians um and that was the ba the, the most you would hear about it in the news <laughs> and he was having um sam harris on to essentially say muslims are inherently more violent based on their ideology right like like there is a different tone 10 years later very I, I, a very different tone now that and um you know uh, people say that in a court will get your phone call but the the fact is is that this is it, it, this is the way that it will change and, and i don't uh, it will not change necessarily anytime soon but this is a big but th it's one of those things where you keep you, the, the the pressure keeps the building right i mean it, it, it builds we're starting to hear um you know asif in uh you know calling telling the biden administration get out there and you know call for a ceasefire um He's not the most progressive uh, member of the Senate, but a uh, Jewish senator from Georgia. Uh, it, it, no, I mean, I what, think that takes courage. It takes courage and it creates a certain amount of like oxygen for people to fill. I do think that um, Aviva Chomsky was right when she said that, you know, what Biden is trying to do is uh, use his foreign policy as a way of feeding uh, his right wing constituents more um, and his more right wing leaning constituents let's say but i think at one point it becomes just too much and you know i don't know when that comes but um i i have said for years my fear is that they're just going to continue to isolate themselves and this is on the road to is israel isolating themselves um and they are going to you know ultimately we're going to get into the situation and it took many years in terms of apartheid in in south africa uh there was a uh a, a similar uh boycott and divestiture uh movement and it took it took uh many years and there was a lot less sort of complicated in many ways right oh. i mean the afrikaners yeah. were you know did not have like a you know um a a, a broad international uh constituency other than the corporate backers who were there uh and once these corporations were able to sort of sort of make their you know figure out how they're going to be fine in a post afrikaner world um but it's more complicated uh with israel but it's but but it is there has been a marked change at least in the public perception of at least a significant portion of the public and uh that makes that's that's a that makes a, a difference. People Earth, talking about those countries in the same context is also you also see a lot more and more of that. I mean, Michael did a lot of that with uh, Mandela stuff, but Nima Shirazi pointed out this quote from a South African document from the '80s around the time they were working together on nuclear weapons, and it says Israel and South Africa. This is from a, a South African government document. Israel and South Africa have one thing above all else in common: they are both situated in a predominantly hostile world inhabited by dark peoples. And also one just note on South Africa is they ditched the, their British uh, um, sort of sponsors for the Nazis in World War II. So like these countries will turn on their like original hosts um, if they're not getting what they want out of them.